Alpha Blended Transparency. It's one of those awesome effects that really helps sell an app. It's not cheap, but it's worth the cost, right? Well, what if I told you that you're paying more for Alpha Blending than you have to? My name is Ian Nee Lewis, and in the next few minutes, I'm going to introduce you to a hidden cost of Alpha Blending on Android, and I'm going to show you two ways to avoid it. Now, you probably already know why Alpha Blending costs more than opaque rendering. When you render an opaque element, you only need to write to each pixel once, but when you're blending, you have to draw every pixel at least twice. That's because we need to know what's underneath our alpha blended view in order to blend with it. But did you know that alpha blending also has a hidden cost? Under some conditions, a single alpha blended view can cause an entire branch of your view hierarchy to be drawn twice. Now, here's a real world example. It's a fancy list view and it uses alpha blending to tint the photos and the subtitles. Now, under normal conditions, each element is drawn directly to the screen back to front. If an element has alpha, it's blended with whatever colors are already on the screen. But let's say that we wanted to take this entire list view and reduce its transparency a little bit. Now, that's pretty common. Lots of apps these days use animated transparency and transitions to make it look like a view is fading out. As we decrease the alpha value, you can see the view start to fade into the light colored background. Okay, But what you can't see is that we've just triggered a hidden extra drawing step. You see, when the entire view becomes transparent, our previous rendering strategy doesn't work. If you just draw each element at the reduced alpha, you start getting colors blending in where there shouldn't be. Now check this out, the title text on the left, and compare it to the same text on the right. The one on the left is correct, and it's still bright white. The text on the right, on the other hand, is starting to fade into the colored background. You can see the same problem with the photos, too. They're picking up a little more tint from the background than they're supposed to. So how does the renderer get the right result? Well, it has to use a two-pass drawing technique. It begins by drawing the entire view as normal, at full opacity. But it doesn't draw it directly to the screen. Instead, it draws it to an off-screen buffer called a hardware layer. Now, hardware layers are pretty cool. The GPU is really, really good at copying pixels from hardware layers to the screen. And it can do some neat tricks like scale and rotation and transparency during the copy process. And that's exactly what the renderer does in the second drawing pass. It tells the GPU to copy all of the pixels from the hardware layer to the screen. And it applies the new alpha value in the process. So why does this cause a performance problem? Well, it's because hardware layers are one of those things that has a large upfront cost and then gets cheaper over time. The first time you use a layer, it's more expensive than just drawing directly to the screen. The savings come later, as you reuse the layer without changing its contents. But in the case we're looking at, we never see those savings. Why? Because ever, after every frame, the renderer throws the hardware layer away. Every single time we draw this view, we have to pay the setup and draw costs all over again. Now, at first, this probably sounds like the renderer is making a dumb decision, but that's not really the case. Those off-screen buffers take up memory, and the renderer doesn't have a good way of knowing whether or when you might want to reuse that image. So it's making the smart choice given the information that it has. So how do we give the renderer better information? Well, first, we can tell the renderer to keep that hardware layer around uh, by calling views.setLayerType with layer type hardware. Now, this will tell the renderer to reuse the layer and make the drawing operation nearly twice as fast. Just don't forget to set the layer type back to layer type none when you're done, so you don't waste precious video memory for nothing. If you're targeting API 16 or above, you can use a shortcut. Call viewPropertyAnimator.withLayer to have the animator manage the layer type automatically. Now, another common example is a view with a drop shadow. This kind of view has an opaque part and a semi-transparent part, but it's never going to run into the draw order problem that we saw earlier, and that's because the two parts don't overlap. If they don't overlap, then it doesn't matter what order they get drawn in. So we can let the renderer know about this condition by overriding view.hasOverlappingRendering. If that method returns false, then the renderer won't create a hardware buffer. It'll draw the view in just one pass. Now, this can make a big difference to draw performance. In our sample app, setting the overlap rendering flag to false cut our draw time in half. You don't actually have to have non-overlapping content to use this flag. If you specify it on a view that does have overlapping content, you'll still get that same performance benefit. You just won't get 100% correct alpha blending. Now, whether that's a bad thing or not depends on your application. Just remember, 
Even if you do make a view draw twice as fast, that may or may not make your entire app faster. Always profile your code. Find out where the hotspots are before you make any changes. There's tons more tips and tricks available to improve your rendering performance at the Android Performance Patterns homepage. And don't forget to join our Google Plus community for more great info. And remember, keep calm, profile your code, and as always, perf matters.